Hi everyone! Today we're going to be doing a drawing of a cityscape with overlapping buildings and faces on the buildings inspired by an artwork by James Rizzi. So for this artwork you're going to need paper. It can be any paper you have. I'm just using a piece that's in my sketchbook. You're going to be doing the drawing with a pencil. You could use a black marker or permanent marker to trace your pencil lines if you want to make them a little bit darker or a dark colored crayon would work too and then you're going to be coloring in your buildings and that can be done with whatever you have as well. So I'm going to be using crayons and markers, a combination of both, to color. You could also use paint, colored pencil, chalk, oil pastels, um, whatever you have. Alright, so I said that our buildings in our city are going to be overlapping. So what does that mean when things are overlapping? If I hold my markers and my crayons next to each other like this, they're not overlapping. They're just next to each other. But if I move them so one is a little bit in front of the other or blocking part of it, so my crayons are in front of my markers and they're blocking this back corner, that's overlapping. If I have them like this, that's still overlapping. Over here, overlapping. I could put the markers in front. Since you can't see, part of this object, it means they're overlapping, one's in front of the other. So some of our buildings are going to be in the front and some are going to be behind um, is what we're going to try and show. So starting on my paper, when you start your overlapping buildings it's much easier to start with the buildings in the front row. So those would be at the very bottom, the buildings that are um, closest to us and maybe a little bit shorter than the other ones. So for this you're going to be using your pencil However, I'm going to do it with marker first, just so it's easier for you to see, because it'll be a little bit darker with my marker. All right. Down. All right, so I'm starting with my buildings at the very bottom. doesn't really matter where I start along the bottom, but I'm going to have my marker or pencil, whatever you're using, start at the bottom. I'm not going to come all the way to the top, because I do want to leave space for those buildings that are behind it. Maybe my first building is just a rectangle. I know when I go see um, buildings in the city, I see a lot of skyscrapers that are this shape. And that's a pretty easy shape to draw. You could make all your buildings that shape if you want. I like to mix it up a little bit and have different shapes though. All right, so I'm still working on this first row. Maybe my next building I'll have come to a point and back down. I could do a building that is round on the top. You could even make a building that's your own shape, right? I've never seen a building this shape, but it'd be pretty cool if there was one like that. Remember, you're the artist, so you can design your buildings to look however you want. All right, so my first row of buildings are not overlapping. They're just next to each other. But now I'm ready to start my second row, and I'm going to have buildings that go behind this first row so that they will be overlapping. So I'm going to start my next building right in the center of this one. Maybe I'll have this be a building that comes up to a point, oh, and then it goes off the edge of my paper. Now I know this building doesn't just stop right here, right? That would be a floating building, and while that would be cool, that doesn't exist. Um, I know this building does go behind the other one, behind the other one, but because this building is not see-through or transparent, I can't see the rest of this building going behind it. Kind of like when I was holding my markers, or my crayons, in front of my markers like this. I know this marker box has a corner, but when I'm holding something in front of it, you can't see it. That's kind of like what our buildings are doing right now. So I'm going to start my next building. Maybe I'll start it right here on this one too. Maybe this will have kind of a crazy shape building. And then once I hit one of those lower buildings, I'm going to stop because I know the line would keep going, but I don't want to go through that building because um, that would make it look see-through. All right, let's try the next one. Sometimes I see buildings, it's hard to draw upside down, um, that have this shape. I like to imagine they're like stairs for a giant. Then maybe I'll do another just plain rectangle. I stop when I get to another building, even though I know it keeps going. 
I think I can fit one more. We'll just do another rectangle that goes off the edge of the paper. Now I've got a little bit more space here. I could make a third row of buildings if I want, or I could draw uh, maybe some details in the sky, like clouds, stars, snow, rain, a rainbow, moon, um, anything that would be in the sky. I think I'm going to add two more buildings, and then I can do some sky details. Maybe I'll do another here. So I'm starting at the top of one of the buildings. Create my top. I'm going to go back down and stop when I get to another building. I think I'll fit one more right here. Let's see. I'll do another pointed shape. Come up and then back down. All right, I think that's plenty of buildings. So now I'm gonna start the details. On each of these buildings, you can add different details. James Rizzi had faces on a lot of his buildings in the painting um, that I'll put on the blog and on iLearn. You can put faces on yours. I'm gonna do that on some of my buildings, but not all of them. I can also do different window designs. I could do signs on the building. Um, I know last year when we did this, some people put signs to show what type of building it was, like if it was a hospital or a school or a store. Um, you could also put doors. There's lots of other details you could draw. I'm going to start with some of the faces. Um, I'm drawing this upside down, so I hope this works. I'm going to start with this one. This is kind of like a window shape. Could have that be windows, but I'm gonna have that be eyes. I just did an over the hill line. I'm gonna color it in except for a little spot. Same thing on this one. Maybe I'll do a triangle nose, and this will be a happy building. Maybe you can see a little bit of the tongue. All right, let's add some eyebrows too. All right, then maybe this building, I like to show different expressions like maybe one's happy, one's sad, one's confused, one's silly. Um, I also like to change the shape of the eyes. Maybe this one I'll have be winking. So it's got one triangle eye open and then it's got an over the hill line to show that eye is closed. Maybe I'll do a rectangle nose and I'll have them smiling too. All right maybe this will be my sad building. Um, Let's see, I'll draw oval eyes for this one. Circle inside. And maybe a tear coming down. That's the ad building. Oh, he kind of looks worried too. All right, let's add a face on this one. Let's see, I have semi-circle eyes. I've got a triangle eye, circles. How about some square eyes? Ooh, you know what? Maybe these maybe this building's wearing glasses. I'll do a circle nose. And maybe this one will be surprised. Like, oh my goodness. I'll put his eyebrows way up here. Like how when you're surprised, you go like that. Alright, let's see. I'll add one more face for now. I can add the rest later. Um I notice I'm trying to make all my faces different. You don't have to do it this way. I just like them all to look different. Um, maybe I'll do heart-shaped eyes. Kind of reminds me of the heart eye emoji. If it's got heart eyes, I feel like it should probably be smiling. Maybe I'll put some eyelashes on there too. And maybe a heart nose. All right, so next I would go finish adding faces to the rest of the buildings, but I'm going to do that later. You probably don't want to watch me add that many faces. So now I'm going to go in and add some windows to each of my buildings. This is another thing I like to make it a little bit different on each building. So one might have squares going across. One, I might do long rectangles. Maybe one I do um, instead of windows. Have you ever seen buildings that kind of have these lines on them? I guess those could be all windows too. Um, maybe, let's see, this guy needs something. Uh, maybe I do triangle shaped windows. Oh, I forgot to leave space for a face. Oh well, this one won't have a face. I could do circle shaped windows. Maybe this one has lots of little 
circle windows. Oh, if you can still see that. Um, and then it would keep going, right? Different shape windows on each one, different faces on each one. I might have to repeat the windows on a few of them because I did a lot of different buildings. Um, but I will finish the rest after and I'll post a picture of my finished one. So step one was to draw the buildings. Step two, I added faces to the buildings. Step three, to add windows. If you've done this all in pencil, you might want to move on for the next step to trace it all in marker. Now remember, I did mine in marker first, but that was just so you could see it a little better. The last step, oh, actually, the next step, not the last step, would be to add details in the sky. What time of day is it? What season is it? Is it nighttime in the winter, so are there stars and snowflakes? Is it morning in the summer? Is there a sunrise? Is it cloudy? Is it raining? That's up to you. Um, I think I'll make mine nighttime, so I'll add a moon in the sky and maybe some stars. You can see that. And when I color it, I'll color the sky a dark color, like black or purple or really dark blue. But I'll leave the stars white so it looks like nighttime. All right, now the last step would be to add color. Remember, I'm using crayons and markers to add color, uh, but you can choose whatever you would like. I'm only going to color one of my buildings right now. You don't need to see me color all of them, but I will post a picture of this when it's all colored. So I think I'll color this building right here. So me, I chose orange to start with, so I'm going to add orange windows. You don't have to have the windows be all the same color. You could have them be rainbow colored windows. That would look cool. Or maybe you could do a pattern in your windows. Orange, purple, orange, purple, orange, purple. That'd be a pattern. All right, you know what, maybe I'll make can't really see this. Maybe I'll make the nose orange too. All right, I'm going to switch colors because if I have orange windows on an orange building, it's going to be hard to see all my details. So I think I'll switch to this light blue for the other part of my building. Ooh, I like that blue. Almost like a teal. Since I don't want to color over the eyes and over the windows, I usually outline it like this. It kind of helps me stay in the right spot. And then I can color in the larger areas. Oh, I could also color my mouth in another color. to leave the big part of the eyes white, um, but you could color them in a different color if you want. Hmm. All right, I'm quickly going to color in the mouth here. I just chose pink. And there is one of my buildings colored. So next, I'll color the rest of my buildings and I'll color my sky, my background, um, and I'll post a picture when it's done. So real quick, I'm going to say the steps one more time. Step one, you should be using a pencil first, is to draw your very first row of buildings. That's the ones in the front row down here. Step two is to draw the buildings that go behind those ones, so it looks like they're overlapping. So remember to draw those ones, you can start in the middle of one of your first row buildings, draw the top, and then this one went off to the edge, but this one I started in the middle, draw the top of the building, and then as you come down, when it hits one of those smaller buildings, then you stop. Right. So when you have all your buildings drawn, the first row and the back rows, then you can add faces to your buildings, then you can add windows or other details. Then you can trace your pencil lines with the darker color so they're easier to see. 
And the last step would be to color in all your buildings and to color your background. I can't wait to see what your buildings look like when you're all done.